All right, I'm down here at my buddy Mike's. There he is. How you doing? And it's, uh, what's about 8 o'clock, Mike? It's about 8.30, 8.30 at night. And we're headed on a road trip to Indiana. Indiana where? Well, it, we're, our final destination is Illinois. Cra uh, what is it? Custer Park, Illinois. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep, yep. You know, I got relatives in Illinois. Do you? Joyce does, yeah. Uh -huh. Yep, got, uh, we're heading to Custer Park, Illinois to see my buddy Joe. He's got a pony engine for the big Caterpillar gen set over here that we've been working on for, well, three or four years now. Hmm. So, I've been, I've been searching for a while and we finally came across a complete pony engine for this thing. Mike was telling me it goes right there. Yep. See where my finger is? It hooks right to the engine. Hooks right up to the drive shaft here, the gear. Yeah, the flywheel. Yep. And explain, tell them what, what it does. It's a two-stroke and it, it... Well, it's, it's a two-cylinder, it's a two-cylinder inline. It's, it's four-cycle. And the idea is that uh, it, its only purpose is to start the main engine, start the diesel. So uh, if you were out in the field and you didn't want to worry about keeping your batteries charged for an electric starter, you would have this engine and you could either crank start it or some of them were electric starts. So you could crank start the little pony engine, it's gasoline, and it's water cooled. It uses the same coolant as the main engine, so if it, especially if it's cold out, you would let that run for a while and let it slowly warm up the coolant of the main engine. And then it's got a little transmission on it, so you would, this is the, the, the compression release here. See how it has start, half, and run? So you move the compression release to start, and you'd engage the transmission and you'd turn the main engine over with no compression until you get oil pressure in the main engine. And then you would bring it up to half compression. That allows a little bit of heat from compression to build up in the cylinders. And then you would move it up to run. So the pony engine would be turning the main engine over with, with, com with full compression but no fuel to the main engine. And you would open up the throttle on the main engine. You, you crack it right up to the run position. That's the throttle lever right there. And then as soon as the main engine, the main engine's RPM exceeded the pony engine, the pony engine transmission disengages and you run it on the main engine. And then you would just shut the pony down. So, so that's what we're getting. Yep. This engine, I don't know if it originally had a pony. It had an electric starter on it when I got it. So some of them didn't have pony engines, but... I'd hmm. like to put one on here so I don't have to lug around a bunch of batteries when I take it to shows. So how many mile round trip is this going to be, buddy? Uh, probably about 1,600 mile round trip. Yep. Two day, two day trip. Yeah, so but you know, we're going to see some friends on the way out there and pick up a couple other things. So, so it's going to be a fun trip. And if we see something on the way, we'll show you. It's going to be dark, right? Right? It's like I say, it's 8 o'clock now, and it's going to be dark all the way till uh, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it's about so. a 14 mile trip out there 13 or sorry 13 14 hour trip out there hmm. so we will we'll probably be getting there around noon tomorrow hmm. so so we might not see nothing you might not see nothing until we get to our buddy joe's and uh, and then maybe we'll see if he'll let us uh, do a little filming but uh, if we do see anything interesting uh, we'll we'll film it but if not we'll see you at lunchtime all right we say you ready to go buddy i took the road let's move them out all right let me give you a little update on where we're at here. Uh, I don't even know what town we're in, Mike. Where we're at? We just passed Wauseon, Ohio. Wauseon, Ohio was, yep. we've been driving for 11 hours straight. We did stop uh, four times, get something to eat and fuel up. And then we ran into this uh, snowstorm, blizzard, blizzard conditions. Yes. But we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep plugging on way. Yeah, there's no traffic, which is excellent. Yeah, look at that. We're the only ones on the road. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've covered 553 miles so far from New Jersey. So we're, we're, we're keeping the speed under control because we don't know what the road conditions are. So yeah. we're just taking our time. Yeah, we didn't take any uh, video of anything because it was everything was jet black. It's dark. <laughs> Matter of fact, it didn't it didn't get light till 7:30 here. Yep. We're kind of worried, you know. But it was, it was because uh, we ran into a rainstorm and it ran in, it ran into this uh, this blizzard. Look at that. That's pretty in the mic. The trees mm -hmm. catching the snow. All right. So uh, if we see anything anything real interesting, uh, we'll let you know. But that's an update. 11 hours, 550 miles, in uh, just just past Toledo, Ohio. All right, all right. 
we're in the, it looks like an old bridge used to be there, Mike. A train bridge, bridge or something, yeah. We're in the Illinois now. Yep. Look, they got signs for horses. What town did we just pass, Mike? Uh, Mantino. Mantino or something. Mantino, Illinois. We're almost at our destination. Yep. A lot, a lot of open fields here. A lot of open fields. Farmland. A lot of farmland. Look at it. As far as the eye could see. Route 113. Hmm. Looks like an old railroad bridge here, Mike. Looks like it's a walking path now. Hmm. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Turn right Here's what we came up here for. So you're gonna put pony engine. Slink. You're gonna slink here, right? When you're gonna strap it. Probably weighs about four or five pounds. If you're on a strap right now underneath there and lay it out there, how many straps you got? I got plenty of straps. So, yeah. Come on, you go to the truck. Alright, lift. You clear? Right, if you lift now, we should clear. Oh yeah, I bet. Yeah. A little bit of weight in the feet. Soon as we clear that tailgate, get up the one here with us, with this cart before we get it any higher. Okay? Yep, yep. We got a little ways to go yet. Yeah. Let's at least get it on there, turn sideways. Let's get a little closer, Mike. Do you want to look underneath for this thing? No, oh, just for the hell of it, so I know what I'm getting. We've got a little flashlight in the picture. Okay. That's really about it right there, huh? Let me uh, hop up there as far forward as you can get it, really. Action! Alright, come down. Now, would you like a block of wood, Mike, to kind of block it up? I have some blocks in the bed. In the here. Okay. Yep. All right, we picked up Mike's little uh, engine, his pony engine, and uh, this is uh, this is the little bridge. It looks like a railroad bridge at one time. Maybe a, we'll read it. And somebody somebody will say what it is. I know what it was. The was that the Wa Waponsi Glacier Trail? Huh. I know there's a story behind that. Come on, buddy. Very neat. Very cool. It is. I feel like I'm in a movie. Stand by me. You ever seen that? No. Yeah. A bunch of bunch of kids and everything are messing on a railroad track. Oh or yeah, something. the trance coming. I remember that. Yeah. One. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only scene I ever I missed from that one. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's uh, you know, like I say, it was dark the whole way, so maybe on, on the way back it's uh, it's gonna be lighter, so that'll be tomorrow. I don't know how long this video is going to be. It's probably going to be pretty long. Oh yeah, look at that. Let me get a, let me get a a zoomy on there. You can't really see it too well, Mike, on huh. the camera. I don't know if you guys could see that. 1902. Huh? So does that make it 118 years old, Mike? 118 years old. 119, right? 119, that's right. Yeah. One more thing I forgot about. This year. Pretty cool. All right. I'm going to shut these off. My battery's going dead. I'm going to shut these off till we get to the middle here. All right, here's that river. I don't know what river that is. Somebody can uh, tell us, leave us a, a name. I think I'm, I'm telling them to leave it. Here's a, here's a map, but if I tell you. Yeah. Look, I just give Mike a minute and he'll tell me what it is. Des Plains, the Plains River. How do you pronounce that? Is that where we are? I don't Des, know. Des Plains? Mike was, Mike was calling it, or Joe was calling it Des Plains. Des Plains. <laughs> yeah. 
Where's right. that? Let me go over here. The other side. Yeah, so this looks like an old railroad bridge that just turned in. They concreted over it and, and turned it into a bunch of trails down there. Hmm. There's people down there, Mike. Huh. You don't say. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Old rail lines. Lay out the rail cars over there. Look at that steam engine, Mike. All right, we got stuff. We got we got places to go, places to be. Look at Mike. Click out of two. Mike's Mike, <laughs> Mike's picking the love locks here. Look at her hanging up all over, Mike. All right, we're going back. It's I'm freezing my yeah, bunch is off here. Hey, Mike, we're noticing uh, some of these barns here. I don't know if you can see this one. I'm trying to get a good good picture of it, but they they got a big things sticking out the top of them. We don't we don't have them in Jersey, the kind of barns. And they seem to be very popular here in uh, Illinois. It's a traditional Jersey type barn. Yeah, right. right. But we, we must have seen it. There's this one back here. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Very unusual. I've never seen one before in my life. And today I've seen uh, 50 of them. Somebody let me know what's going on. What's going on with these old new, new barns? There's another one. Right. Me and Mike just got done. There's Mike over there. How you doing? I can't see Mike because there's a light behind you, but they know it's you. They see the silhouette. It's uh, just about 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, what is this? Mountain time or what? What is it? Central. Central time. Central time. All right. And uh, Mike, we got some snow overnight. Looks like it's slowing up. Still snowing, but it's slowing up. Hmm. You know, they didn't forecast this because I checked. You know, and, and I only seen 20% chance of rain up this way. So. I don't know anything. I know. It's a weatherman. So, uh, we're going to go uh, stop by and see our other buddy Mike and pick up a couple of uh, small engines and then continue on. So, uh, hey, you know what? I got this bag here. My buddy uh, John Crane gave me this little bag. And uh, I'm using it, John. I got my protein bars in here and uh, my text machine charger and my camera charger and my iPad charger. My iPad fits in there. My my text machine fits in there. My wallet fits in there. Great little item. So uh, I got to thank you again, John. Beautiful piece of workmanship there. So, all right, what do you say we uh, let's go get some breakfast, buddy? Let's do it. Alright, uh, areas. Hey, check this out. This is one of the pretty snows that clings to all the trees and everything. Look at that. In the middle of nowhere. Even the weeds look pretty in this kind of weather. Alright, there's my ride. I gotta go. Alright. Alright, we're in Indiana now and uh, we stopped off our buddy, uh, one of our buddies, our uh, engine buddy, Mike's. He's a, he collects diesel cats and stuff like that. He's an old codger, man, and he got some uh, cool shit, uh, cool stuff. And uh, he just opened his garage for me, and I, I noticed this truck. He got an old truck here. Looks like a, a 1948 Chevy or something. 50s Chevy, I don't know. Got the original bed on it. A little nice radius here and everything. Wood. Let me come around here. Watch your step. Watch your step. Oh, he's got dozers, international dozer. I don't even know they made it. Harvester dozer. Uh, it says made in Canada. I wonder. It might it might be a little dark in here. I don't know, but he got some he got some cool stuff. And I'll, I'll try and show you some of it. Look at his vices. <laughs> I didn't, I've never been here before. I'm looking on the shelf here. I'm I I can't even count them. He's got to have 20 vices here. I know he's got another shop, and I look in there, and he had a. He had four vices, they weighed about 280 pounds a piece. I'll try to get some video of that. But, uh, yeah, this looks like a 1948. Here you go. Got 48 on the license plate. Pretty cool. But, uh, they, they're, him and Mike are, they're both their names are Mike, so don't, don't confuse them. 
There's another vice over here. Yeah, here's one of them uh, 250 pound vices. Yeah, he collects them and sells the vices. There's another one over there. Ay, ay, ay. Got a lot of little small engines here too. Look like Wisconsin's. But uh, they got a cat out there they're going to try and start. Looked like a military cat engine because it was gray. So that's probably from the Navy. But uh, they're going to use the pony engine. Like Mike just bought the, the pony engine for his big rig. This, this engine ain't quite as big as Mike's, but... Oh, look, he's no, got this a... Is, this, this, this is the ident... This, this gen set is almost identical to mine. To the one you're working on now? Yes, yes. Huh. So... It's the, funny, yours looks so much bigger because it's inside the garage. Well, it looks bigger because mine's on the cast iron base. Right, right. And my generator is different. So the huh. engine... The engine, the engine itself the is the same. The radiator is the same. The pony's the same. But I have the General Electric generator. Mike's got the Louis Alice generator. Hmm. And then I have the base as well. So they're, they're, they're the same. His is only a couple of months newer than mine. Oh, yeah. Mine's, my, I forget, mine's November 39. When's, when's this built, Mike? In uh, March of 40. March of 40, yeah. Hmm. Mike's, so, got the, Mike's got the most deluxe one. You know what? I grabbed the wrong You got a funnel? Just relax. Where was Let it? Let me see if I can get a, a look at this. I didn't read it myself, but uh, maybe you guys can uh, read it if you want. Pause it and read it. Oh, is that your uh, funnel right there? That uh, bottle? I didn't think so. Oh, just hit my head. All right. Did you show him the house? The house is cool, too. Oh, yeah, he, he custom built this. Uh, is that aluminum? No. Yeah, no, it's it? aluminum. Oh. Yeah, He's American. He builds little aluminum houses for him. I think that's big enough to be a, a little house. Huh. All right, they're getting ready. They're going to start the pony engine. And then the pony engine is going to start this big uh, cat. So uh, I'll try to get that on film for you. It's running. It's just running. It makes a lot of noise. Here. They're filling, they're filling that thing with oil that Mike just bought. We call no, I, keep pony I keep oh, it oh, warm. Oh, you, you actually warmed that? Well, I keep it in the shop. Huh. Pretty clever. I do everything I can do. Hey, go get that heat gun. And let's see, let's make, let's go, go get the heat gun. And check the oil pan on that side. Okay. Down at the bottom and see if it's warmer than the block up at the top. I'm not sure my uh, block heaters work. We're gonna let this run a whole tank of gas dry. Alright, this is what you call a real cold start. It's snowing out here right now, and uh, we got our buddy uh, Mike. He actually has a YouTube channel, the uh, Wrench Guy, right? Wrench Guy, Mike? Yeah, I'm gonna leave a link for you guys. Go over and check him. He's got some, he's got some cool stuff over there. When was the last the time you started, on. Mike? Turn the mag on. Oh, ah. I should have caught that. Just turn the mag on. That's just the pony engine. They let that warm up before they try and start the diesel. I already filmed that. Now it's out in the light. Right. I'll turn these back on when they get ready to start the engine. Here's something interesting. You see the way the fan is already spinning? I'll get Mike to explain that. Hey Mike! Explain why that uh, the fan and everything is turned already. So, so this engine is running, the pony engine is running, and what Mike did was move this lever and pull the pinion in to mesh the flywheel drain gear. Right. And then he engaged the clutch. So now the pony engine is spinning the main engine over with no compression. See how oh, yeah. this is a compression release. We're in the start position. So one of the, one of the exhaust valves in each cylinder is held open in the main engine. 
And that's just smooth, loosening things up, right? Well, we're getting oil pressure, and we're getting oil to all the points. Right. But and most importantly, is we want to heat up the diesel block. We're using the coolant that's going through the engine, the pony engine, right. to heat up the, the diesel block. Okay. Yeah, show where that is, Mike. This is the engine. Right. This is the clutch housing. Right. This is the transmission for the pony. And it, like you say, the, the engine coolant goes through the engine. Right, right there. Okay, it comes in here, it goes out here. Now right now, the coolant coming out of the pony is already 101 degrees. But the main engine block, it's still only 21 degrees. So the hot coolant is rising out of the engine, mixing with the cold coolant, and the cool coolant is lowering back down. And here it's got a water pump as well. Well, there's no pump on the pony, but yeah. Alright. Go ahead. I came back here because of all the noise, Mike. Sure. But I got just about a full tank of gasoline for the pony engine to run. And what I'll do is, I'll run it out of gas. That's how long I gotta take to get the block. How many gallons is it? It's just one gallon. Oh, okay. Just one gallon. But that's, that's kind of my standard for cold like, weather starting. Like you're operating, uh, well, that's, yeah. Well, yeah, my own. Yeah, that's cool. Very cool. I'm going to show you something that's interesting too, you know, everybody uh, knows uh, the, the ball mason jars, right? Well, here's a ball jar, but it's actually made for oil. Alright, I'm going to shut this down, like I said, he's going to run that until he runs out of fuel. So I'm going to shut this off until he's ready to start the cat. This is something interesting I just stumbled across. It's, uh, I was going to call it a hydraulic press, but it, it can't be hydraulic, it's got to be hand press. It's got to be from the 1800s. You, know, you spin the wheel to where you want that thing and then it's got a handle. You know, you pull the handle down and it operates the press. Pretty wild. Pretty wild. Then I see over here, I don't, know, I don't know what it is, I guess it's a drill press. You spin the wheel. That's got to be from the 1800s too. Spin the wheel and it spins your whatever that is. Got a lot of cool stuff here. I'll try and get what I can, and the lighting isn't going to be the best, but uh, we'll deal with it, right? All right, let's continue on. This is uh, International Harvester uh, T4 Dozer. He's just telling us a story about it, and uh, he almost killed himself on it. It uh, fell into a ditch. He's driving it, fell into a ditch, and it rolled on him and broke his collarbone, shoulder, some shoulder bones, and put him in a hospital and everything, but uh, he survived it. He's got so much cool stuff here, I don't even know what it is. Like this here, I don't even have a clue what that is. But look at this Henderson. Henderson uh, lawnmower there. Or, I don't know, no, it can't be a lawnmower. It's got some kind of tines on it. I don't even know what it is. Huh. Pretty interesting, though. Got little engines all over the place here. Little engines and big engines, huge engines. There's a welder here. I actually made a video with this. He had this at a show. Twin arc. This is this is like a, uh, only two of these are, uh, 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 around. Caterpillar D315. Where did the logs come from? Only two of them in existence. What I guess? I don't know. They have the stuff I don't even know what I'm looking at. Like that there, I don't even know what that is. 
What is it, Mike? I've never seen anything like that. It's a Lawson Ray, R A Y. Huh. They're pretty uncommon. Yeah. And he's got what is it, a lever start on there? Yeah. Well, I think it's a oh, combination. Yeah. yeah. Huh. A lever kickstart. You could make a lever or actually foot. Uh, what toe foot start? Yeah. Toe start. Huh. Pretty cool. They are pretty uncommon, and he's got nice. That's an inboard. With a, with a, a, a recoil starter on it. Wow. Huh. That is very uncommon. Well, that's to be able to start it when you're sitting in, in the back of the All boat. Right. Sure. You're going to like this. I just found out what this was. And like to blow me away. It's a treadmill for goats or dogs. And if, you, if you're like me, you're thinking, why would you want to exercise a, a goat or a dog? But it actually propelled a washing machine or, or other kind of machinery, you know, it had a shaft coming out and you'd use the dog or the goat to run the washing machine. Is that wild or what? So uh, even I, I run across stuff I don't know anything about. Here's something else I come across that I have a clue, I have no clue what it was. As a matter of fact, uh, wrench guy Mike even said to me, I asked him, so what's that up there? He goes, oh, you know what that is. I said, I have no idea. And he tells me it's a, a fly swatter. A fly uh, scat, they call it. You put it on horses back in the 1800s, and you know, when they shake it, this would shake all the flies off them and stuff. They're all leather strings. So, uh, something else. He said there's only two sets here. Looks, a lot, looks like a lot more, but it's not. Fly scat. Look it up. I'm going to look it up myself. buddy Mike's shop here and uh, he got a lot of cool stuff. Check this out. This uh, clock of his, but look at the propeller. Propeller, that wooden propeller is probably off an old uh, J3 Piper Cub. Pretty cool. And even this, he lives in Indiana and here's an old pennant flag from uh, Indianapolis Speedway. That's pretty cool. And then here's something else. Check out this display. It's a, a Williams wrench display. The thing, it's got to be eight foot, eight foot tall. And uh, I don't know what the story is behind it. He told me, but I, I don't remember. And he's collecting all the wrenches that belong in there. It's a salesman's display. Pretty cool. Looks like he, uh, looks like he has all the wrenches uh, where they belong. 
very cool. It's one of the uh, best devices I was talk talking about earlier. Big one, 250 pounds. This one here is a rigid. It's got a shear put in the in the vise here, but uh, he's actually has uh, has more of them. Let me go uh, take a walk and show you them. Here you go. Look at these four vices here. They don't look they don't look that big uh, just from looking at them. But look at look at the size of my hand compared to this. That thing is huge. Is something that's really cool and unique. I'm gonna try. I got, I got lighting behind it, but I'm gonna try the best I can. But uh, here, read this: the Westphal, H. Westphal Company, Juliet, Illinois, 1874. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Mike to explain it to us what this thing is. But this, this thing is so cool; it's unbelievable. <coughs> All right, I'm here in another one of Mike's garages here, and uh, he got, he's got some cool, unique stuff here. And here's something I came across, and it's a, a loss. It's a loss in engine, but it's a heater for the for the U.S. Air Force, and uh, it heats up these. Uh, over here's the heater that comes out, and then here's tubes. You see these uh, cloth tubes, and here's a picture of it for uh, for the jets. You see the tubes actually come here and heat the engines. You pilots out there know what I'm talking about when you got to preheat the engines. But uh, what's unique about this is it's supercharged. And they got a supercharger over here, and I've never seen I've never seen anything like this before. But uh, talk about cool, huh? What year is this, Mike? 1943. 1943. Oh, that's a war baby. Right. It uh, was surplus. Huh. Mm -hmm. It would heat the oil. I guess they had like 40 gallons of oil in them radio engines. Her engines. Mm. And, and wow. they used the heavyweight oil. Yeah, I guess so. <coughs> and here's the oh, heater itself heat over here. Pretty cool. And I guess to save the starters and the batteries, you'd have to get the oil warmed up. Mm. I've had to oil the whole thing up. Too. Then here, here's something over here that's pretty cool start. either. So you this is the, cylinder, the smallest, cylinder. the smallest yeah, engine Caterpillar makes. I, they they blow, I think they directed and it's, right uh, to the oil. It's gasoline. Oh, okay. Right to the bottom of the uh, of the. Let's see, a Caterpillar uh, 800G. Well, here's this little baby Caterpillar, Mike. That's, that, that, I think that's about 19, uh, about 1932 or 33, a Caterpillar single cylinder air cooled gas engine. And it's the smallest one they make? It's the smallest engine they ever made. Huh. It's a power unit engine. It's not really for driving a tractor, it's for driving the controls on a grader, hmm. for powering the controls on a grader. And about what year is that? About 1934, 35, hmm. something like that. We don't know that, it's got the serial number tag on it, but we're not able to trace the number to the year. Hmm. They were made from 1932 to 1942. Pretty cool. Yeah, I've never seen anything like that before. That's my cart, yeah, my cart hmm. handle. This something's pretty cool. He uh, he's displaying a bunch of cast iron cats. He's he's into cats. Everything is cat. And uh, well, <laughs> I misspoke. Was down here is uh, John Deere and uh, International. Yeah, that almost looks like Internet. No, it's a dozer. Yeah, he has a. I think he has, it's it's a small one of the dozer he has out in the the shed. That's pretty cool. But here's uh, the radiator top for a caterpillar. And he's actually got it sitting on. Two caterpillar pistons. Pretty cool. I'm glad that you know he that he put time into something building a, a nice display for that. It's pretty unique in itself. But uh, something else I seen that was very cool is uh, got a, a model here of the USS Constitution, and uh, one of his friends built it. Hand built this out of matchsticks. This whole thing is built from matchsticks. And probably maybe a few toothpicks in here, but uh, he gave it to Mike. I guess the, he got too old for it and gave it to Mike to hang on to and restore. But uh, what a piece of workmanship on that! Very cool. Very cool. All right, I'm gonna go back out in the shop see if I get Mike to explain that. Uh, that uh, I guess a nut and bolt holder. All right. So he's out in the garage. All right, I'm back on this thing, and I didn't explain what it was, but it's it's a nut and bolt holder 
you see up here, it's uh, you see it's a half inch five, and it's got numbers on it, and that was the bolts. But yo, Mike, come here. Where are you at, Mike? Yeah, come here. Yeah, come here. Show me how this thing works, and uh, where it would be. Okay, so basically, this is a wood screw holder. This is these all these bins held different sizes of wood screws. Hmm. That's cool. And this is how you get them, right? Say you want a, a, yeah, a quarter you want twenty, a size, quarter twenty if you or had something. Some in there, you just slide it around to the open. Rotate yeah. it around, right? Yeah. So these are all. How many? How many are they? You have any idea how many? There's 122 bins, so that would be 122 different sizes of screws. And it's from and all, of, all of these. All of these unlatch because you have to rotate it around to an opening. Right. To some, to access, some opening somewhere. Right. To be able to re reach the screws that are in it. And this was all rusted and busted up when you got it? And you, it did, was, you painted it, was, it? It was definitely rusted it up. It yeah. Oh, yeah, I stripped and it up. And it was actually, you were actually missing a couple of front ends and you, yeah. you tried to, uh, missing some tried to uh, cast these, have these cast and uh, yeah, I had three this was, this was the first cast. failure. But uh, right. you finally, you finally got, were able to do it. Yeah, there were a couple, a of, couple of you, you welded together. So Very anyway, cool. I'm in the process now of lettering it up. Right, putting, putting the letters in here and stuff. Yeah, lettering up the numerals and then the knobs. So I, I, cool. the topper is done. The topper is all. Well, the top was missing part of it, and you. Huh? You this was missing, and you fabricated no, it. No, no, no. It was, it was here. I just remade the tin. Remade the tin, but I just I took it all apart and basically removed all the crud that was on it, and then repainted it. And this would be on a countertop of a hardware store or a general store. Right. Very cool. And then and, and of yeah, course we have the, the string ball. Yeah, yeah. The Actually, string ball would be placed in here, and the end of the string would come out of the one of the openings here, and they would use that string to tie packages back huh. back in the day. What's, is, is there a function for the hole in the middle? I haven't been able to figure that out maybe yet. Maybe for the string? Maybe they put the string down through or well, you can't access it? it? Yeah, been. there you go. It could have been, but... You don't know. It could have come right out of the fancy That's pretty worker. cool. So it's uh, from 1874. Wow. Right. And the next patent, there was an improvement patent on this done in 1882. So I... I'm led to believe that this was made between 1874 and 1882. Hmm. Wow. Well, did a beautiful job on it, buddy. I'm working on it. Beautiful. My glass guy has got to finish cutting the glass for me. That's why these wires are still on here. Oh, yeah. This, these these are I, actually glass faces, so you can see what's in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. That's I've, I've never seen one before. Yeah, that's pretty unusual. And I'll probably idea. never see another one. Maybe not. Very cool. All right. It's unusual. Thank you, Mike. You're, you're welcome. All right. I'm back in Mike's garage here, one of his garages, and he's just pointing stuff out to me here. These here are all uh, inboard boat motors. And you got one particular here. What is that, a B or an A, Mike? That Briggs. A B. Model B Briggs here. And it has a transmission on there. And the transmission is actually a Briggs. They made that transmission. And when he's telling me, he says, this is the only one that is known in existence. Let me go around the other side and get a shot from there. But that's pretty cool. Something as unique as that. Let me go around the other side. Yeah, can't really see enough. Let me turn the light on a little better. Yeah, not much to see on this side, but still. One of a kind engine. Very cool. Got something written down there on the cardboard, but uh, I can't get to that. Yeah, all of these, all of these are marine engines. Wisconsin marine engine. Hmm. Oh well, there's something else over here. Another, another Wisconsin it looks like. Hmm. This will got transmission on it too. Hmm. Oh well. I just thought pick, uh, this here just caught my eye when he told me that. I said, "Oh man, I gotta go get the camera again." All right, all right, we made it back. It's uh, one a.m. on one a.m. Sunday. I don't know if you could see this, guys, but uh, we came back with a full truckload of stuff. Our buddy Mike Garin, uh Indiana, gave us. He gave me a, a couple engines. 
an old Lawson and a Clinton. Gave Michael Wisconsin. Are they? Yeah. Both Clintons. I don't even know what I got. <laughs> he gave me two Clintons. So, uh, it's uh, some video material. So, uh, this is it. The end of the trip. I'm tired. We've been up since uh, 4 o'clock this morning. We traveled 800 miles. So, uh, what do you say, Mike? Let's end this. Enough of this. All right. I'm out of here.